is just ungodly. We gotta fix that. Hey everybody, it's Joe with Just Jeep It, and for this video, we're going to be building rock sliders for the Chief. So we got this big beefy hunk of 2x4, 3 16 thick steel, that'll be the base for their rock sliders. And this video is going to kind of walk you through how I design them, a couple measurements, some thoughts of, you know, what works for me. Uh, I've been looking all over the internet for the last couple weeks to find rock sliders that I liked, and I just couldn't find anything that... Um, interested me so I figured I can build them the way I like them and uh, for a whole lot cheaper too. Now steel has come up in price over the last couple months I guess because of the pandemic and stuff uh, but you can definitely build it cheaper than you can buy it. So join me as we walk through how we make some rock sliders for the XJ. All right let's get started. I got my coffee too. Oh yeah. Is it me, or does anybody else find it really comfortable to lie under their Jeep? It's kind of cozy. So with any project, first thing you want to do is measure. I already had the idea in my head, so I know I wanted the rocker to extend all the way from the one edge, the, the front, all the way to the back. So I believe, that, I believe when I checked that, that was 65 inches. And this is going to be off camera. But it's from the one end, from stem to stern they stay. I don't know who they are, but whatever. 65 inches. So that's all the way from the front of the rocker all the way to the back, 65 inches. So we're gonna cut our tube steel 65 inches and that'll cover the entire length of the rocker. Uh, ones I saw online, they kind of stopped short a little bit, but I, I don't wanna bash the front of my rocker. I mean, the middle's protected, but what about the front? So this one's gonna go all the way, for, all the way from front to back, so. That's what we're going to do. 65 inches, front to back. Let's get that steel cut. All right, so let's sketch out our ideas here. So this is looking at it from like the top down. So here's a unibody frame. Uh, you got to have a place for them to mount. So we got some plate steel here and here. And then you got to, can you see? Yeah, you can see. Then you got to connect it somehow. So you're going to have these bars that go across all right there's no measurements i don't know whatever long it is well we just know this is that's the frame there's the slider itself right that we know is 65 because we just cut that piece 65 inches okay and then <clears throat> what gives it strength is there's a strip well, it's really straight that runs across the two connectors and through various spots bolt into the pinch weld for where the inner and the outer rocker panel meet so you're going to have a, a mounting point here a mounting point here with self-tapping bolts and i'm going to be i'm going to run a, a weld uh, down each side nothing crazy just just to give it a little more strength i don't know how good self-tapping bolts are i'm sure they're fine but you know whatever and then we'll uh, drill a couple holes uh, it's either going to be angle iron here which is where I'm probably going to go but I'm also going to try some uh, three-quarter inch uh, square tubing and then of course this be welded here and welded here but that's that's basically it it's it's one piece of steel with two connectors that go across so here's where it gets kind of complex right um, where do you want this to lie under the Jeep now, again, we talked about um, the pinch weld. Um, the pinch weld between, now if, you, if you've seen a rocker before, I don't know how this is going to work out, but if you, if you were to do like a cross section, you kind of have your outer rocker, your inner rocker, I'm sorry, and there's a pinch weld here, and you have your outer rocker, and it kind of comes across and it goes like this. That's a really bad picture. Uh, but here's like the, the, the pinch weld right here. You got your inner and your outer. Inner, outer. Okay, he's happy. So we're going to put some bolts through here 
And I believe the way I want it to lie, this is how I have it in my head, this is inner, this is outer. I'm gonna want that two by four steel to kind of lay in here. So that's gonna be the two by four steel. Inner rocker melts into the floor, but uh, I think that'll work. So I have a cross section of the piece that I cut and oh, maybe maybe this will help if I turn it this way. So we're gonna kind of butt up and we'll have like a little gap in between the, the pinch well, the pinch seam and uh, the slider and then we'll have a little gap here. But I think that's where I want it to lie. So let's go, uh, let's get off paper. I guess I'm not much of a draftsman either, huh? That's all right. Let's go to the Jeep and let's go take a look. So my rockers are in pretty good shape, except for that little spot right there. I guess we'll have to fluid film that. But you can see the last time I went off-roading, little, little damage on there. And that's the last thing I want to do to the Chief. So, oh yeah. So here's here's what we're talking about. Inner rocker comes to this little little pinch seam here, and then there's the outer rocker. Here's our little piece that we cut. Ooh, sorry about the lighting there. So we kind of want it to rest right in there. And we'll put a little gap in between there. I think that'll work just fine. So it'll protect the outer rocker all the way up yeah i think that'll work just fine let's see get a good so you can get a good shot too yeah you can see that it's it, it sticks out pretty far so any rock that kind of comes in contact is going to hit that i mean it's 316 steel so i'm definitely not worried about messing the rocker the rock slider up that's what it's there for you gotta protect this sheet metal it, like I said, it's in really good shape, and, and the, the thought of cutting those out to put some 2 by 6 in there, just I couldn't do it. So we'll use this method. So I think that's how we'll do it. I'll put some spacers in there, and we'll kind of get things going. The only place that it gets a little goofy, and that's why I think I have to put space, is because here's the, uh, the fender and these little bolts. So obviously you can't have it flush because you have those bolts. So if you have it... If you have it spaced out away, again, I know it's tough to tell. If you have it spaced out in the way, I think that'll look just fine. All right, let's get a jack and let's get the piece and let's start kind of dry fitting things here. Okay, so after fooling around a little bit with placement, I think I got it to where I want it. Had to cut the little plastic fender flare a little bit to kind of get it tucked in there. But uh, the gap between the body and the steel, I just ran my hand across it. And the gap felt pretty even. No real measurement, just kind of how it feels. I think that looks pretty good too. That's a good reveal. Again, a lot of it's just feel, right? It's kind of how how it looks and your judgment, right? Let's go look underneath. Kind of see if we've captured what we're wanting to do. Don't move it. Oh, man. All right, so there's a gap between the pinch seam. That's fine. And there's a gap between the actual rocker itself. That's good because we want the we want the skid or the slide to take all that energy and not push it up into the rocker. So I think we're good. Yeah, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. All right, let's get some measurements because now we can measure across um, from here to the rocker rock slide. And what we'll have to do is notch this out too. It's two inches, so we'll just kind of cut, cut, and I think we'll bend it back. I don't think I want to cut it all the way across. Oops, sorry. I don't think I want to cut it all the way across. So we'll cut, cut, and bend back. Because this is low enough where 
when we attach, sorry, when we attach to the body, I think they're going to have to come down a little bit, but let's get some measurements. But that's it, really. It's just look and feel, right? Oh, crap. <laughs> Hit my head. Needs to knock some sense into me. But that's what we're going for. That looks good. That looks sharp. All right, so I put the steel plate that we're going to mount the connectors to because you got to make sure you account for that thickness. And we're just going to kind of go across. Again, your, yours is going to vary, but here's kind of the methodology, right? So I'm going to choose to weld it. I'm, I'm sorry, mount it to the, the thicker part closer to the uh, leaf spring perch. So... Again, we're not uh, we're not putting a man on the moon here. We're putting rockers on a 92 Chief. You want to get it exact as possible, but off by a centimeter is uh, not going to cause any issues. I can just get the measurement here. So, so bring that even. Looks like that needs to be nine inches. So that first connector will be nine going across. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, about nine. Yeah, let's go with nine inches. Because what'll happen then is that connector will go across. Okay, we'll notch this out and it'll connect right there. Nine inches. Cool, dig it. Cut this to nine inches. safety gear on too guys don't wanna, you don't want to get a two by two piece of square steel jammed in your eye socket ear protection too because I'm already deaf what I already can hear a darn thing I wish I had a bigger one but it is what it is. It does a good job. I used it when I was building all my bumpers and skids for my YJ back in the day. Ooh, sounds so powerful. piece cut let's uh, take a look tough to do with one hand here yeah uh, that'll work out pretty good actually yeah that's not bad notch that out and that should be enough to get it square all right I'll have to bevel all right, so this this can't come just straight across. This will have to uh, be beveled a little bit, so it'll kind of go down a little bit. That's fine. We got the tool. Alright, so that second measurement is 8 and 5 eighths. So we'll measure that. Measure twice, cut once. 8 and 5 eighths. Just a little off from the 9 that we measured from the rear. All right, super simple design, everybody. So that's the front. That's the back. But that's the overall shape and design. Pretty easy. 
I feel like I got everything mocked up pretty good, lined up real nice. We're going to start uh, prepping for tack welds. So we'll start cleaning up the surfaces. Oh, let me tell you what, man. These benchmark abrasive wheels, thanks to Jeg's Garage, Justin turned me on to these things and they are awesome. They last a whole hell of a lot longer than like a regular disc because there's like sandpaper on top of sandpaper. So as it disintegrates, it kind of <clears throat> like shark teeth, right? <laughs> but uh, these things are great. Check them out. Benchmark abrasives. I think you, now and again, they put those specials on the, uh, on the internet where you get a whole bunch for free, but you pay like 10 bucks a ship. You, you can't beat it. So we're going to start uh, prepping up uh, for tack welds just by sanding these. And uh, yeah, this is... Uh, Coming along pretty good. All right, let's sand it up. Now the fun part, get the weld. So let's get to it. This time I'll have to weld upside down. I hate doing that. We're just gonna tack it into place. We're not gonna finish weld it. I wanna tack it in, I wanna tack both in, and then uh, put the plates on, and then we'll we'll dry fit it. And if it's good, we're going to go move on to something else, non-Jeep related, and uh, finish welding it up tonight. All right. All right, so here's where we're going to cut out so the tube can go a little bit further up. So we'll just cut a nice two, two, two and a quarter inch gap and we'll just fold that over. Hopefully you can see that. Here's a little notch, and that's kind of where the box is going to fit right in. Uh, I think it's going to be good. Cool, cool, cool. All right, we're getting into the home stretch, so now we're going to drill some 3 8 holes. Check it out. You can't even see it. Is that out of focus? Yeah, it looks like it. 3 8 These are 3 8 self-tapping bolts. And we're going to put one on one side, one on the other with that drill. It's gonna be lightning. All right, we took a little break from the action to do a couple errands in the neighborhood and uh, take a break, eat some lunch. So here's where we left off. The only thing you guys didn't see is mounting the pinch seam mount. So what we'll do is we'll drill a bunch of holes in here 
and this will mount right to the pinch seam and then it'll give it its strength because if you just had it here oh I drilled these holes too three inch holes and uh, from Amazon got these three eight self tapping bolts so we'll do a little test see what uh, drill bit is the best for drilling into the frame but these are the kind of bolts you would get from the uh, you know from a manufacturer if you bought the uh, rockers the rocker slides but that's it uh, so what we'll do is uh, I'm just gonna run a bead all the way down here and we should be good to go finish weld everything rock and roll and then we'll have to do a little fancy dancy manufacturing here we'll like I said, we're going to cut this back here, and then we're also going to cut this edge off here to kind of give it like a blunt end. Blunt end, I think that'll look pretty sharp. Don't need to do it back there, uh, but I will make it a 45 degree angle here. Uh, but we won't do that fancy little uh, side cut. But uh, that wraps it up for this afternoon. Um, maybe I'll finish well tonight, maybe not. We'll see. But. Uh, more to follow. So we got a couple more things. We got to finish weld. We got to mount it up, test fit it again, and then uh, clean the welds up and also finish it. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use the textured black that I always use or I'll use Eastwood's rust encapsulator. I'll probably end up doing that. Uh, plus, we also need to do um, the end caps. So that'll be fun to see. I'm looking forward to seeing how those uh, come out. So, all right. Um, we're going to stop the video and uh, pick up next time. So. I'm out. All right, so we just cut the tube down to 45 degrees, and we'll just clean these ends up. I already made the little plates for them. That kind of made them a little oversized. So we have plenty to, uh, you know grind down after we got done welding but those little plates will go right on there but kind of gives you a sense of how it'll all look so let's grind them down that should do the trick next step is weld them on Just finish weld that puppy in. And we've come a long way since we last saw our Just Jeep It video. So instead of running a whole bead of weld all the way across, we carefully chose after quite a lot of deliberation slash just thought that would look good uh, welded it in spots where I thought would look pretty fancy and uh, I think it looks fancy and we welded it on the other side as well whatever was uh, like like I have, I have a weld here I have a weld on the opposite side so it's pretty well covered uh, I did box this in cut this at a 45 degree use some I think eight, eighth inch plate ground down to welds sorry looks pretty sexy I like it Man, 316 steel is tough to cut through. I would definitely use a plasma cutter, but um, you know, take some time with an angle grinder and it looks good, does the job. So I finished welded, finished welding the, uh, the brackets, little spot there, that's all right. So it's all done, good to go. Oh, apparently I did not, clean the welds on this side maybe I'll leave it just for fun's sake nah, I'll probably clean it up I don't know but uh, one of the things I did want to point out uh, is this was tacked into place when it was test fitted 
So trying to figure out where this would go when you have this mounted up, when you like have it on the bench, uh, you, you want it close, right next to that pinch seam. So taking it, putting this on the Jeep, and then sliding this under so this matches right up to the other edge of the pinch seam. Uh, that ensures that this will hit the, ooh, it's still hot, damn. Uh, this will hit the, uh, the, the, the unibody that you're gonna screw into with these holes. And then this hits, the, this hits the other side of the pinch seam. And then I just drill a whole bunch of holes in there. But that's it. Uh, what we have in store next is we're going to go on ahead, kind of brake clean it off, prime it, paint it. And uh, you can see here, I've been busy on my uh, off hours. Fab this bad boy up this morning. This is the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the driver's side? Yeah, driver's side. You see it still has the uh, blunt force trauma uh, ends on here, so we'll just have to 45 degree those puppies, minus the uh, sidewalk chalk, because I just didn't feel like moving it. Uh, and we'll do the other side there. But yeah, man, these, thing, these things are coming along really well. Um, sturdy as all get out. Oh, I did want to show you this. I thought this was cute. Was it on this one? Nope, it's not on this one. Hold on here. You know you love your Jeep. Oh, that's still hot, Joe. Jesus. Oh, oh boy. When you monogram, <laughs> check it out. The Chief. So everybody will know that these belong to the Chief. So thought that was a lot of fun. Plus, you almost got to see me drop this on my foot and break my foot. Thought that was sweet. All right. Next up is Paint Prime or Prime and Paint. All right, got the holes drilled. Then we're gonna prime it, and then we'll paint it. But there she is. Cleaned it off with a little bit of brake clean too, just to get all the you know the grinding dust off and everything. But uh, she's ready for her prime and paint. So uh, let's see what it looks like primed. Little little layer of primer. Got a welded American flag on there too. Oh yeah, it's all primed up. All right, here she is. I use that, that black textured paint and I really like it. Durable finish and I like that it's textured. It's pretty cool. So uh, the name of the game here is to get this or that. Holding it up with those things. Got some tools some drill bits so I'll uh, I'll give you some uh, info with the drill bit size and the size of the bolts that I use and uh, we'll kind of go from there so sorry about the uh, fan the uh, blower there so there's the pinch seam right there we're gonna drill a bunch of holes to match up with the holes we have here And that's what we're going to do first. We're going to mount it with the pinch seam uh, ready to roll that way. So, all right, let's get this puppy on there. I'm just going to position it, kind of center it on here, and then hold one of the crossbars with this bad boy. That should be enough. Hopefully, this will this will fall on me, and you guys will get a good shot of that. Oh my god! Oh. All right, here we go. Excellent. Yep. Even on both sides. And there she is. All laid out nice. Once I get it bolted up, I'll, uh, I'll show you underneath. I'll show you the structure I have to hold it up. But all we're really going to do, oops, tighten this up, is going to uh, bolt it through the pinch seam and then drill some I think what 11 30 second holes through the frame and that's it man and then she's installed so what we'll do here is a uh, quarter inch holes I think I have one two three four five six six quarter inch holes and then we'll do uh, four 11 30 second holes for the 3 8 bolts so uh, let's get that started
<laughs> Touching it up. And uh, that was a quarter inch drill bit. And we're using a quarter inch by 20 grade eight hardware with some lock washers. And tough to get them, tough to get them in, but we just kind of do this. Yeah, you can't see. And then we just married up on the other side with the bolt. And we just do this a couple more times. And then we are golden. Let's see, is that low enough where I can get it to lock in? Oh, wrong way. Oh yeah, check that out. Oh, money. If you drill the holes in the right spot. Oh, oh it's turning now. If I can wedge it in there a little bit. There you go, it's holding. There you have it, a couple more and it'll be bolted to the pinch seam. Dunk. For a little bit of added strength, I took some, I guess it's one inch angle iron and kind of made a little ledge. I don't know if you can see it too well. For the, uh, pinch seam bracket to mount to uh, I just thought that would make it a little bit stronger and then I just cut the uh, I just cut the excess off but that should help especially in the back and then I have one in the middle as well I don't know if you can see that but just another one there just to give it more strength I'd like to be able to lift it up by the rockers so that's kind of the goal but uh, it's all cinched in on the pinch seams you can see the other side see how it kind of goes all the way down there beautiful now we're gonna uh you can't see it we're gonna put the bolts the self-tapping bolts into the frame let's roll all right pretty much the final step in mounting this is getting these bolts to go through the frame uh, i'm using an 11 30 seconds drill bit for the 3 8 self-tapping bolts it's going to be a little bit of an angle but that's okay when you're drilling in a frame, just watch out for fuel lines, brake lines, all that stuff. They're on the other side, but just something to be aware of. Whoa. I had to put the drill bit in the chuck far enough in so I'd get as, get a small enough drill bit so it's not too angled, but makes it kind of twist in a bit. Oh, this is brutal. Oh, this is just ungodly. We got to fix that. Yeah, right, here we go. Oh, paper. Here we go. Oh, shit. All right. Let's get that bolt in there. Oh, of course, my wrench is all the way over here, as usual. I opt to use a, uh, a, a wrench, not an impact wrench. I don't want to strip the threads out because it's making threads as it's turning. And I think if you put too much juice on it, it'll strip the threads out. So. All right, bring it back when it's done. <laughs> well, that just about wraps it up. Got the uh, connectors bolted to the unibody. Hey, those self-tapping bolts work pretty good. Here's my dog. I don't know if you can see her. There she is. Hi, Bella. Yeah, so it's all bolted up. Sorry about the lighting. And uh, it's good to go. Another bolt. Try to get some lights there. Next there, oh yeah, just sexy. Looking good, that wraps it up guys. 
you know, I kind of do like fabbing up things. It really gives you a sense of accomplishment. Um, I think I saved a little bit of money, but I think most importantly is I designed them myself and I made them the way I like them. So that right there is, is worth all the time and effort, in my opinion.